and I have close on, recording. Just, Thank just you for the reminder. Door, I would have forgotten to do that. Thanks, Jeanette. All right. That's all right. Um, I may, I'm, I'm chewing through Neil's data on his phone, so depending on how long it lasts, if I just go dead, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'll get out of my pyjamas and make like a real person. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, well, just while we're waiting for Rachel to um, come on board, how's it going, Lisa and Michael? How um, accessing Moodle, getting a hold of the links, um, opening links, are you finding this you know, platform okay? Have you got any issues? Uh, not yet. No, I've been able to open everything. Great. Yeah. Uh, I had a couple of issues to start with. <laughs> I was just making sure that I was actually um, enrolled. Yes, that was quite a big yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now it's okay. I've been into it a couple of times, but because I'm spreading it out further, I haven't been doing probably as much work as everyone else. Yeah, and um, that's and that's yeah. absolutely fine. So, Lisa, you might find, um, you know, sometimes the tutorials have actually moved a little bit further on to what you're doing, but that, you know, again, that's absolutely okay because... We're going to take these as well, so you can go back and review them, you know, as you start progressing, you know, to the point that you're at. Mm -hmm. um, and also, with some of the tutorials, like this one, it is sort of an extension activity. So really, we're, this information that we're talking to, I uh, talking about today, I actually feel is essential. But within the course, it's not until about sort of week eight that you start delving into it more deeply. And then when you do the assessment um, module, uh, sorry, the assessment course, probably next year, um, and that's when you know you you really scratch below the surface and really sort of you know start looking at as, at assessments very deeply. But, you know, what we're going to talk about today is stuff that you can take into your classroom straight away. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And it will it will build on, um, you know, when when we look at the assessment that we're doing and you're doing your delivering a lesson that you're being observed on. So it is it is helpful, but really it's a lot of, um, you know, it's a lot of chatting, touch base, see where we're at and just give you some sort of useful tips to, okay, to move away with. And Trish, um, could I? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Michael. Um, yeah, Michael. Could could somebody um send Rachel a link somehow? She can't. If she if she goes to her email. Yeah. To to the actual um meeting in the, her email calendar. Yeah. And clicks on that and scrolls down. She should see join the meeting link there. There should be a link in her calendar. If she yeah. Can. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, no, that's, that's fine. Okay. That's yeah. okay. So um, what I was going to say was that this course is a level five and the old GDTE, all the courses were level seven. And in the new iteration of the GDTE that you guys are, are undertaking, there is two or three level five courses and then you step up to the level seven, right. which um, will make the process a lot easier more, uh, it will step you through the journey rather than um, just starting off at level seven. So what what Trish and I are going to attempt to do in this course is to set down, you know, like building a house, the framework, mm -hmm. and then each of the courses following on from us will build on what we establish with you. Okay. So there's a lot of um, there our tutorials are more facilitation learning from each other and the face-to-face -face session we had the other day I came away with a new tip so there's, there's always learning and we learn from each other which is a, which is the way that we we want to facilitate rather than like we talked about the other day Michael being teacher-led where the teacher goes you must learn this it's more around yeah. that yeah work and working to your pace so Lisa um do you mind if I tell the others what you're doing, how you're no, extending it? So Lise, what Lisa's doing is due to the, her being, um, her substantive contract being different to others, her and another staff member are taking a longer period to do the first course. Um, so that's what Trish was talking about, not being in alignment with what most of, most of you will be doing. But morning, Rachel. Oh, don't be in a panic. Don't be in a panic. No, don't. <laughs> you're all very relaxed. <laughs> your microphone's turned off, Rachel. So if I, you can want... hear, I can hear her from my office. 
it's a bit hard from Twizel, my God. <laughs> so you might get some, you know, get some of that back noise. <laughs> Is that Hi, better? Rachel. Hi, Rachel. That's yeah. lovely. Great. Well, Trish, I'll hand over to you, and um, if, I, if I go dead, I'll apologise. No, no, that's fine. Um, and if you do go dead, have a great weekend. <laughs> Thank you. I'm in twice all, um, Rachel. Sorry, but going dead just doesn't sound like a good thing to do on a Friday. <laughs> well, it might Not be really. on the way up to Mount Cook. <laughs> oh. Could do it on a Monday, hey? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so welcome to the to the first tutorial and I'll be really keen to get feedback as well and just see whether this sort of um, the Skype platform works. Um, yesterday I sent an email that was a, a funny looking KWL template. Did you all get that? Yep. 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 Have you got it printed off in front of you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes, but the KWL template, um, and you'll see there, so the K stands for what do we know, the W stands for what do we want to know, and the L stands for what have we learned. So in the K, write down anything you already know about formative and summative assessment. And in the W, anything that you want to know. Now, if you write nothing in the K, it absolutely doesn't matter. But hopefully by the end of today, um, we'll be filling out some stuff in the what we've learned in the L. So I'll just give you a couple of moments just to fill anything you can in the K department, what you know, and anything you can in the what you want to know. Okay, and just let me know when you've you've jotted down as much as you can. <laughs> Mine was pretty straightforward, Trish. Yeah. Um, right at the beginning, so I put and for K, I put not much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Lovely honesty>. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, and for W, I put everything or as much as possible. Aha! Uh -huh, brilliant, fantastic, Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> I think that sums me up pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and this is what this is all about. This is, you know, discussing what are these because you come into these institutions and they start bandying around words and you think, what are we talking about here? So, you know, part of the fundamentals is to actually get a grasp on these words. In the conversation bar on the left hand side of the screen, at the very top, I put a note saying, here's the link for the Google site we'll be using today. Um, can you all click on to the, the blue link? That'll take you through to the Google site, please. Where, where, where's I that? I can't see it, Trish. It's not there. Is it not there? No. no. What? Can you post it again? How, How, be okay? How strange. Can you see? That? Oh, sorry. Can you see all our conversation on the left-hand side? Is there all? Ah, oh, beautiful. Oh, it's there now. Okay. That's weird. Michael, did you get the list of acronyms and Rachel that I 
um, got posted on to Moodle last week for you, the Polytech list of acronyms. We, we got it put on um, I didn't see it, but I'm sure it's... Okay, I'll have another check. It might be on yeah. the program I think I had page. a copy here somewhere from when I did my orientation. Okay. There's, um, we might have put it on the program page rather than the fundamentals, but there's a big, there's a big list. I'll find out where it is for you. Thanks, Trish. That's okay. Now you'll see you have a page here that says Fundamentals of TT and L, and Welcome to the Fundamentals, um, and then you'll see a picture that says Independent Learning Plans and Formative Assessment. Mm -hmm. If you could all put your cursor over that, you should get a hand. Click on that to open it up, please. Can you share your screen with us, Trish? Yeah, mine's still loading. So. Yeah. Oh, is it? Okay. So where do I go? I've got it. I just got it up now. The fundamentals of TT and L. TT and L. And then yeah. there's independent learning plans and formative assessment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Lisa, have you got it? No, it's still loading. Oh, is it? Okay. Can, can you share your screen, Trish? Are uh, you able to do it? The fourth button. Yeah, no, that's With the TV right. screen on it. Oh, goodness me. Okay, can you all see that off my screen? It'll, it'll take a wee minute to load. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes, wonderful. Thank you, Trish. That's all right. It won't load from my end. I don't think I've got enough power. Okay. So Michael's got it. Lisa's still loading. Rachel, how are you going? Yeah, I'm looking at uh, two more pictures, assessment types and ILPs. Is that what mm. it's supposed to be? Yep. Fantastic. Yep. Okay, so we'll go into there. And then, Lisa, are you on board? Yep, I've got yep. it. Yep, okay. So where it says assessment and ILPs, go into assessment types, please. Mm -hmm. And then you should have um, two what we call padlets, and it's got a camera looking at you with a brown board, which says formative assessment, mm -hmm. and the one underneath, which says summative. At the top of the formative, it will have a share or a box, if you can see my screen, or a box that will enlarge it. So this whole page now should be the size of your screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this is a collaborative um, learning site and it's called Padlet. What you can do on this site is if I click, I can write something about formative assessment. So what I thought we would do is have a conversation of, you know, and, and you know, Lisa and, and Rachel both honestly said they don't know a lot about formative assessment, what it is. So I'll start and put something in there that formative has the um, ability to, to motivate our learners. Can anybody, everyone see what I've written? Yeah. Yeah. So, so cool. if you would like to create, um, it's like a post-it note, really, like a post-it note in paper. So if anybody else would like to add something on here of, of formative assessment, what, Michael, did you put some notes down on what you already know about it? Oh, I just know an example of one, like it would be like a quiz type thing where you have, uh, like this, you just have multiple attempts. Great. Um, yeah. And you learn by your mistakes or, or, or not. Fantastic. Um, and with a quiz, is it marked? That's self-marked. Self-marked. Okay. Yeah. Does that marking go towards the final grade? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no, it doesn't. No, fantastic. No. Wonderful. So you could put an example. Write that example up as a quiz, if you can, on the Padlet. Oh, um, okay. If you can. I have to think. Have a one. play. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, Just click anywhere on it. So the double screen. click anywhere on it. Oh, yeah. And you should get a wee box. Yeah. Well, we do it with health and safety. Make a bit of a health and safety quiz. Brilliant. Yeah, should I write that? Yeah. Are you going, Lisa? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
have a think about some of the things that are on Bracken. Oh, yeah, okay. That we use to for the learners to self-assess. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Who wrote that? Not great at fun assessment. Mm. What's something else that formative? What's another reason for formative assessment? What's another explanation for it? You know, we've got two types of um, assessment and we've, we've said here that with formative it's to motivate learners, it's not graded for the final assessment, might be a health and safety quiz. What do you think would be some reasons for formative assessment from what we've gathered here? So if we think about these two, these two, or say lots of people in a class, one are the learners and one are you, the facilitators, and there's two sides to formative assessment. There's one advantage for the learners, or there's lots of advantages for the learners, but there's advantages for the facilitator or the lecturer as well. Mm-hmm. What do you think those would be? So with formative assessment, it's a type of assessment that we may be using um, on a daily basis to see where our learners are at a point in time. So it's not a formal assessment type. It doesn't go towards your summative grading and your final mark at the end of the course. It is a point to see how your students are achieving, that they've understood what's happened in that lesson. Um, And also, it's a really good point to see how you as a teacher have given that information across. Right. Right, that makes more sense now. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, sorry. So if we think about summative assessment as the sum of all of the parts of the course that we're going to to assess, Mm -hmm. and the formative assessment forms forms opinions of how you're how your teaching facilitation has gone, are you pitching at the right level, do the students understand, um, are they meeting where I think they should be um, with the knowledge that all the practical skills they've attained at this time during the course, and there's lots of different ways of, of being able to assess where your learners are at, but it also gives you a really good grounding of how your learners are getting on. Yep. And um, Patricia will talk about some of the ways that we can we can work out on a from an individual lecture what the students have understood or not understood, or from halfway through the course when we do reviews. So we do quick quizzes, mix mix and match. What were some of the other ones? Trish, post-it notes on the door, thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, no, there's there's many there's many sort of different ways that you can actually just during your lesson or at the end of the lesson just see how your how your learners are going. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the KWL that you've got in front of you because that is um, an example of a formative assessment. Um, there might be, you might, you know, do the thumbs up, thumb sideways or thumbs down and, you know, you're getting towards the end of your lesson, you're running out of time, you want to do a quick formative, you know, it doesn't have to be anything, you know, too formal going on to Moodle, etc. But a quick, you know, assessment of where your learners are lying. So you might say, right, you know, thumbs up, thumb sideways, thumbs down, where, where, what's your understanding at the end of this lesson? Um, but a learn, a, oh, sorry, Trish. No, a, learner, a learner can also do their own formative assessment. So if you give what your learners a reading, you can say to them, right, before you do the reading on how to make a stone wall or how to dispense drugs or how to plant this tree, I would like you to write down everything you know about ground preparation before you plant a tree. Then I would like you to do the reading. It's just five chapters five chapters, five paragraphs, and then at the end of the reading, write down what you've learned. And it, it's, a, it's a method of showing the students just how much they have learned. And I think, Lisa, you, you may not remember 
when we first, when you first went into vet nursing, I think I might have said something like, think about what you know now on the first day. And then halfway through the course, we say, think about what you knew on the first day and what you know now. So there's lots of little ways to, to encourage the learner to assess their own learning and reflect on what they've learned as well. There's a, um, there's a whole spreadsheet of um, which I will send to you after this, uh, this tutorial that sort of gives you some really good ideas and some simple um, strategies that you can use. One that I used to use a lot, or two that I used to use a lot involved post-it notes. And um, one would be at the end of the class, there'd be, you know, two questions. What have I learnt from today and what do I still not understand from today? And I would um, get the students to write on post-it notes, just one post-it note, write both answers um, and stick it to the door on the way on the way out and it was good because it's anonymous so no one's feeling as if they're being pointed out that they didn't understand anything. I would collect those at the end of the lesson and then I can see right you know what worked um, and what in in the lesson did I not get across clearly enough and so next week or the next day or whenever I had that cohort again um, I would go back and review another one that I did a lot was um, I would get the learners to draw what they had learnt for the day and again draw it on a post-it note and stick it to the door on the way out and that was that was quite a neat way of of you know gaining you know where they sat because it's quite difficult for learners to have learnt you know something in text or learnt something kinesthetically with their hands and then to actually put it you know use a different part of their brain um, to draw out what they had learnt so it was fun for them, um, a different way of getting their brains working. And for me, at the end of the lesson, I could see, you know, what they had learned. It was a quick, concise point in time of what they had gathered. So what other ways do you think could be some, you know, simple, just off the top of your head, some simple formative assessment um, types that could be used? So you said a quiz, Michael. Yeah. What do you think was? Um, uh, well, well, our one is just a, you know, it's a multi-choice type thing and they just sort of keep going. I think they get three chances at it or something and then they get given the answer so they can keep just keep going until it's all crystal clear. Great. Yeah. And they can do that on online? Is that on Moodle or is... Uh, yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. 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 Great. Yep. Lisa, what sort of examples have you got? So um, we do a lot of like, especially for definitions of words, we do a lot of matching boxes. Great. And then once they've, if they've got the answer wrong, there's like a pop-up that says, oh, you know, it explains why the answer is wrong. Mm. Oh, that's great. Yeah, the correct answer is also an explanation why it's correct. That's brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. More than just a yes and a no, you actually right. get the why, and that's hugely important because that extends the learning. Brilliant. Rachel, have you got any ideas that you think you'd like to... I'm just to... like milling really. Um, yeah. I guess, oh, as I came with so many different topics, um, I'm just trying to think of one, but you know, I guess it's repetition would be if you're doing a practical exercise. Yeah. You know, you have to certainly do it more than once in uh, different sort of um, different Definitely. aspects of it to, to get that um, habit formed, I guess. If it's a, a horticultural... Yeah, that's right. And and yeah. for it to become just the, the way it is, it, it, it is, you know, doing things more than once. Fantastic. So doing yeah. that, yeah, brilliant. So doing those things more than once, yeah. they're, they're practicing for that end result, aren't they? they? Yeah. And they're critiquing, and it just becomes just... refining. Yep. yep. Yeah, just... we're similar, Rachel. Like sort of, you become aware of the different scenarios and you know how to deal with them going forward. Yep. Great. So would you see that then as good teaching practice? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because you are um, giving them the skills mm. to pass their summative assessment at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it's that constant. When it becomes an, an issue in real life, then it's you know it's easy. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's it, one of the one of the reasons why we don't teach a skill and then assess the learner an hour later. We give mm. them time to 
mm-hmm. to go yeah, away and practice. Yeah. Like at block courses, Lisa, where we teach the students a new skill and then we give them a whole six months to come back and then practice, get, have time to practice, and then come back and sit in assessment. So they've had time to to become confident in what they're yeah. doing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Wonderful. So if we go out of this one and go down to the... Um, to the summative assessment. Yeah. So just click out of it completely. Click out of that. Oh, yep. Oh, well, mine. what is that? <laughs> I'm still sharing the screen, aren't I? Sorry. <laughs> I'm lost. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Excuse Sounds me, I've lost cat. mine completely. As, as we you were, can tell. <laughs> as we were all talking, I wrote some notes in the in the side so if we if we're ticking along and there's something that you would like to know or you don't want to lose a thought you can just pop a message in the message box just to the left have you all got that on your screen just to the left Um, well it's probably because i'm screen sharing or there's four (laughs) wee but there's five wee buttons along the bottom and there's one that looks like a wee text box Uh, or over to over to yeah, over to the over right over to the left there's a wee speech bubble. Thanks, Lisa. And if you click on that you should be able to write a wee note as well. Thanks, Jeanette. That's okay. So we've talked about formative assessment being, you know, it it's a daily, it's casual, it's it's um, building our students understanding the um, their skill refinement and building them towards their summative assessment. Um, Jeanette made a, a sort of a, a clever link before when you because you know formative summative and you know I've spoken to people who've been teaching for 20 years and still get those terms mucked up um, and I always sort of think you know the the sum the sum total so your final assessments at the end of the year are your summative assessments mm-hmm. so what sort of examples of or what types of summative assessments are you using within your programs and your courses that you could that you could share with us uh, well, I guess we also use Michael's quiz scenario as a, an assessment as well here. Uh, obviously, you get three chances to get this right. So in most cases, you know, people get it done by the second. Yeah. Um, so that's one of our final assessment ones. And it's, you know, it's good to get that student engagement for some units that um, are you know, lots of small question answer type situations. So is that a, a are they multi-choice and short answer? Yeah, yeah multi-choice, okay. yeah. Great. Are you using unit standards, Rachel? Pardon me? Are you using unit standards? Yes, I'm using unit, both. Okay. And poly, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, any other types of assessments that, that you're using? No, uh, ours, oh, sorry, you go ahead. Thanks, Michael. Um, we have a lot of case-based learning, so um, usually there's like a case that's ref- and then it's reflected on. Okay. And I'm not quite sure. I'm just going into the new um, non-unit standard stuff now, so it's all pretty new to me. Right. Um, yeah. And it is a big change. Yeah, it's a lot different. Yeah. But it it's is really, a, it... um, I like how you can kind of, how integrated it is you can kind of do all that fun stuff it's so not, it's not siloed learning yeah. like we needed the unit standards lisa yeah it's it's, interconnected it's more interactive like it's quite yeah it's cool yeah. and yeah they become holistic assessments don't they so rather you know than, than Jeanette says they're being siloed you're doing a whole bunch of stuff and at once yeah so you're not just um dispensing drugs, putting up IV fluids, um, nutrition, the whole three are joined together within, yeah. the, within the case because they're integrated, yeah. Yeah, and, and so, it would be in real life as well, like when they yeah. deal with the case. So, yeah. so for, for Michael and for Rachel, what's happened with vet nursing is we've gone from 18 years of unit standards and competency-based with our unit standards for our assessments to criterion reference, which is ABC. 
Yep. It's, if you're really unlucky. <laughs> and we're heading that way. We will, there won't be any um, yeah, yeah, any unit standards within our whole program in the near future, <laughs> the next few years. Yep. And ours are gone. Yep. Yeah, Michael's are gone, and, and Michael's done a fantastic job of, of creating rubrics um, oh, wow. at the end of last year. So, incredible. Yeah. yeah, huge, huge <laughs> job. Go, Michael. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> be a <our> rubric guru. <laughs> So there is other there is other forms of um, way of assessing students' knowledge or the sum of knowledge. We have things like open book worksheets, essays, um, portfolios. So yeah, Bath, Pathbright, mm-hmm. Bracken, uh, oh not Bracken, sorry, Pathbright, um, e-portfolios. There's the the old just in time learning closed book theory test which we all love to hate <laughs> so all of all of these are methods of assessing a student's knowledge closed book closed book theory tests i had 300 level stats exam at university and i don't know how to do chi squared anymore but ask me to draw up drugs or do a drug calculation that stuff you you learn and you learn over time, just in time learning. You learn it just in time, but you forget it just in time, just as easily. So, not necessarily always a good way to assess. Labs, yes, that's brilliant. Yeah. Has anybody got anything else they'd like to add to um, the summative assessments or questions they have? How would you go about pract- oh, the practical skills? Like, because we do a lot of industry verification. So sorry, Lisa, I, you faded out on me a little bit. Um, we do a lot of industry verification for skills. Right. How would that, like, obviously there's some theory to start with. Yeah, so generally if, um, say for example, you're doing, um, I don't know, um, give me give me a, a vet example. So, so for instance, Lisa, you're talking about when um, they, they set up an IV drip. Mm-hmm. So you would have a, you'd probably have a theory yep. off that. You could have, you could do it in a couple of ways. You could have a theory prior. Um, you could have a practical, and there could even be some oral questioning within that practical. Mm-hmm. So there could be a few different variations that you're doing. So, so if that was the course, setting up an IV um, for an animal, then you know they, they might be the two ways that you're assessing that. So it could be 50% on a theory test um, or it could be an assignment and 50% on a practical. And they often, you know, the videos that the students submit, Lisa? Mm-hmm. We, we get a lot of the um, students to assess practical skills, so we're not putting them in a stressful situation. Uh, assess practical skills completed by a video when they think that they're ready to be assessed and they're submitted for marking as summative assessment. And it, the reason that we went to that was that it's less stressful for the students mm-hmm. to to come along and do an assessment in a, in a time where they may not be ready. So there is a, quite a bit of video assessing. We have to be careful with the standard of, um, of that the students are being marked to a criteria if they're being marked by external assessors and that the assessors are up to date. So mm. we, yeah. yeah. So, and, and when you have um, an external body looking over you, as you as we go through the program design, it's that um, being in contact, the the governing body gets to approve your program design. So that's where that's taken into account. It's right back at that high level thinking. Um, so they know exactly you know what's being taught. They have approval over that. You have met their guidelines and you have met their standards. So with the with the video assessments that are submitted by the vet nursing students, they're they're marked by an assessor that is qualified to mark. So there is, as Trish said, a number of different ways of assessing that skill to make sure that the student is competent or meets the criteria. Does that make sense, Lisa? Yeah. 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 Okay. So with the um, with the L part of your KWL that you've got printed off in front of you, could you just jot down some notes of what you've learnt today about formative and summative assessment, please?
And we are going to send some resources out after the session, aren't we, Trish? Yes, we are. We right. sure are. Didn't I think that, that formative, um, you know, one is such a a point where you probably do need to to hear everybody's little ditties on how they themselves yeah. do it. Um, I mean, the notes I've written here, they, they, they could be a lot longer, but um, it's just coming out with the interesting new ways of doing so. And that's that's exactly it. It's you know because you don't want to use the same thing. You no. know, every single day, oh, that's um, right. you know, it's Thank coming you. up with, with and, and I'll send you, you know, the, a whole list that I've got here. Um, you know, it's coming up with something different. So it sort of keeps it exciting. They're oh, not exactly. really They're realizing. Like turning up every morning to a quiz. That's yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Quiz yeah. again. <laughs> one of the one of the things that um, I used to do was when, I don't think Lisa got this because it was after Lisa went through her training that I started doing it but when the students came into the classroom when we were starting a new topic I'd write the topic so artificial insemination on the board and go around the class and ask everybody what they knew about AI mm -hmm. and at the end of the class we do the same again and I say what did you what do you know now about AI and we might get four or five spikes off our mind map at the start and at the end they know heaps and then the next class they came into as they came into the class I give them a whiteboard marker and have AI on the board and they would write what they could remember from the last session mm -hmm. and then at the end of the session we did the same again and if they wrote it if they drew it on their page when they came in and looked at it at the end of the course, they could actually see how their knowledge has grown around the subject. And apparently that was quite a powerful tool as well for the learners and for yourself. And they don't realize you're actually um, assessing their knowledge yeah. of what they can remember. Yeah. And they just think, wow, look what I've learned. That's yeah. cool. It sounds That's really cool. relevant to what we're doing. Yeah. Good. And, that, and that's, you know, what Jeanette's talking about is a really nice um, segue into what we were sort of going to discuss because formative assessment does also include, you know, that assessing prior knowledge. So, you know, coming into class, introducing the topic, what do we, you know, what do we know as adult learners and working with adult learners, um, we like to share what we know, we like to talk, we like to sort of, you know, bring what our previous experiences have been into the classroom. So it's a good way of doing that, you know, a mind map or that KWL. And you can see now from, you know, what you wrote on the KWL as an example when we came into this tutorial, um, to what you wrote in the K, to what you wrote in the L should be quite different. So Michael, you had a you had a wonderful um, wee story in in one of the things that you wrote on with the discussion forums about, and I think you talked about it last week um, in the latte session about how you would plan your lessons, and then on reflection you found that the ones that where you were more relaxed and told stories, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you talk to it because it's a really I thought it was a really powerful story. Was it me? Not you. <laughs> oh, it might have been Stephen. But basically, the, the the more planning you did and tried to keep rig, rigidly to your teaching plan, you found that the more relaxed, um, engaging, fun, um, not actually sticking to the plan like concrete made it. Yeah, it, it wasn't me, Jeanette, but I did, oh. I did, I did read that. I yeah. remember reading that too. It must be Stephen. Sorry, yeah. but yeah. I think take the accolade, Michael. <laughs> oh, I was I was tempted. <laughs> so, do you think that KWL could be something that you could use in your classrooms? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. Now that I know what it is. <laughs> yeah. Lisa, I know. Lisa, <laughs> That's why I didn't tell you yesterday when I sent it. Lisa, if you're doing an online tutorial. And you're using Adobe or even um, Link or Skype for Business. You can use some of these strategies as well. Yeah. It's not just for the face-to-face. -face. You can get them to do polls on Adobe or write up what they've learned on the screen or use a Google Doc. And like where you're doing here, just a plain Google Doc, just a plain word format, and get them right to write down what they know at the start, what they know, what they've learned at the end, mm -hmm. and so the same, the same sort of um, techniques can be used face to face, online, in practical sessions. Yeah, I think it's really relevant. I remember doing a similar sort of thing, like what you said, 
like uh, about DDB in the second year. Yep. Yeah, and she was like, what do you know about a DDB patient? And we kind of threw some ideas up. And yep. it was just, and then it kind of like just branched off into this major complex thing. <laughs> but I can remember like going, oh my gosh, this is amazing! Like all this stuff can happen from this one complication. Yeah. yeah. And and because the learners are engaging with the lecturer, and and without without realizing it, you're actually helping facilitate the the, the session by um, it being learner centred and drawing from the each of the students what it is that they know and then with your vocational knowledge you build on that and add to their learning and it's amazing. Mm. Now up on your screens, um, have you got any more questions sorry about formative and summative assessment? Uh, probably but not right now. Yeah, maybe later. <laughs> no absolutely and you know and today was this you know introduction into these into the two different types so that you can start running with that formative assessment straight away um, and as I said so later it's probably about week eight um, off the top of my head as we work through this course then we'll, we'll look into the the two assessment types a little bit more deeply. Mm. Personally I just thought it was a little bit late to leave talking about formative until then because there may be within your classrooms, you know, if we're leaving it down that far down the track, maybe, you know, students that are um, are being left behind because we haven't assessed them. So it's just uh, part of your good teaching practice that we've that we've been talking about the last week. Yep. Also, um, something else that is an aside, which is very important if you do have struggling learners, is these ILPs. Now, ILP is an individual learning plan. Mm. Um, and an individual learning plan is, it's like a learner-led development review, um, and it's a questionnaire that enables learners to identify any barriers they may have to learning, and their barriers might be that they're living in a flat with 10 other people, um, and they've got nowhere quiet to go off and study, that it might be that they play sport five nights a week, so they're having trouble doing um, you know, their, their study times, that um, it might be you know, that they've got a hitchhike into tech because they've got no, no car to drive. So it's actually going through, I'm gonna open the exemplar, um, this is something that when I taught at Aoraki before it, it moved over to Otago Polytech, we used to use with all of our students. Um, but I know talking with Jeanette that they used to use individual learning plans for students who had been identified as, as struggling. Um, they might have dyslexia, they might have um, eyesight issues. So it's ways of actually identifying barriers and actually coming up with some goals and then some strategies to reach those goals to assist them with their learning. Um, I've put up the exemplar here and it is also on Moodle and there's also on Moodle um, a template of this and it could be when I was studying at Waikato University we had to do one of these ourselves. Um, and it actually, while you are studying and you're working and you've got um, properties that need care and families, it's actually a good way to identify what your priorities are and where you're going to um, allow some time for your, for your learning. So with the template that um, is on Moodle and is also within here, plus I could send you one if you wanted to as a Word document, you can complete this and it's not anything for anybody else, it's not to be submitted as a discussion, um, just so that you can sort of think, right, what are my barriers to completing this GDTE and how am I going to come up with some strategies that may work to minimize or remove those barriers? And you might find then that this is something that could be used within your classroom with your with your learners. Um, and when I used to do it with them at Aureki, I would come back to it at the end of every term and just review where they're at, highlight some changes that could be made. Jeanette, do you want to talk about how you used ILPs? 
Oh, she might have gone. <laughs> she, yep, she's faded <laughs> out. <laughs> Data's run out. Um, <laughs> what I'll also do is I'll actually just open up the one, the other one that we have here, the template. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Oh no, look what I've done. I've loaded the same one into the, I'll, I will send you the empty one. Um, do you, as you sort of have started to get to know your learners, do you think there, there could be a place for using an individual learning plan for them, for some of them? Yeah, I've got one. Have you? I've got about, mm -hmm. about two in the pipeline that could probably use something <laughs> like this. Right. So it's, I used to sit down, well, with the ones that were really struggling, um, I would sit down with them and complete this. Yeah. Because it, it, half of that discussion and, and that talking would actually draw out a lot more information than if you just hand it to them. Yeah. Yep. So have a play. And I'm actually, I mean, this is this is kind of, as we move into next week we're, with the course, we're really looking at, um, you know, who are our learners and we're identifying um, diversity within our learners. And different learning abilities is definitely part of that diversity. So this is one way that we can, we can acknowledge it um, and actually, you know, work out strategies that can bring them out. So it could be, you know, please, you know, do use it. Um, if you think it would be valid for your learners, because I definitely found it hugely valuable. Right. But I will send you, seeing as I've mucked that up, I will. it is on Moodle, but I will also send you the Word document, because I think on Moodle it's a PDF, so that would be a bit of a nightmare anyway. Yeah. Um, now, with... So you will see on Moodle that all the assessments have now been loaded. Oh, yeah. have, you, have you had a chance to have a nosy at the assessments on Moodle? <laughs> I haven't yet. Not no, yet. that's fine. No. That's absolutely fine. They're, they're there um, generally, well, not generally, as part of policy at Otago Polytech, when a course starts, all the assessments have to be um, available to the learners two weeks um, within that first two-week window of the course being started. So they are up there. Um, have a read over them when you can. It does, and I completely understand, you know, when you start off a course, everything's thrown at you and it just takes time to slowly work through. So um, have a look at them when you can. They do seem that there's a lot in there, but I'll alleviate fears is that as we work through the course, there will be things that I'm saying to you, this is going to be part of your assessment. Um, so maybe, you know, keep this information within your personal learning journal or somewhere safe that you can pull on to use within your assessment. Next week, as I said, we're talking about diversity. Um, the first part of assessment one is, you know, identifying your learners. So it's looking at, you know, diversity. So that, that you could pull out from your next week's online working, keep somewhere safe and use that as your um, first part of your assessment. In week five, we start talking about, you know, lesson plans and, and you know, having some sort of formal structure of your lesson plans. So again, that can be, you know, kept aside and safe and, and used when you do your um, when you do your uh, teaching observation. So we'll start chunking through our assessments as we work through this course. So it, it's not as daunting as it looks, and I know they do look pretty daunting. So assessment one, do you come up here and watch us teach? Yes. Do you? Yeah, right. I'll either either do that or I would prefer to do that. Yeah. Um, then you know, right. have you tape it and send it back? I oh, know you don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's it's much more relaxed if mm. if myself or Jeanette or you know somebody from the um, learning and teaching team does come up. But yeah, I would prefer to come up, Michael. And yeah, yeah. So at some point, you know, have a think about when it would suit you, and we'll pin in some um, available times. And okay. it's probably. It probably would be ideal to talk between yourself, Rachel, and Angus, and so I'll just come up and spend a day. And how far off is that, Trish? Um, the course, 
closes on the 14th of May. Right. Um, so it is just, I'll let you guys work out a day that suits you. Mm-hmm. And then, then let me know. But I would recommend probably within, you know, because you want to have as much under your belt of this course as you can. So yeah. maybe within sort of week 9, 10, or that, that final week 11. Okay. Yep. Um, and also the second part of the assessment part, assessment part or assessment two, spit the words out, assessment two, is um, a reflection. Yeah. And it's... You could actually start working on that pretty soon. I mean, you know, it's talking about your teaching experience, um, not related to the teaching observation of assessment one. It's a completely oh, yeah. different scenario. So, you know, right. you don't have to wait to the end. You can actually just sort of start chunking away at those as you like, or even just formulating some notes mm -hmm. about those. Okay. Um, and the the weekly activities will open before each week um, and at times because we're working with the online development team you may get three week three four five and six all open at once don't be overwhelmed just you know work through the Moodle at your own pace and and keep reflecting back to that front page of um of a, a Moodle that has your timetable on it so some people like to move incredibly fast you know and, and go through it very quickly others like to move you know at a week by week pace or Lisa you're doing you're doing your own time so yeah. uh, you know that's absolutely fine that's absolutely fine but just you know just keep chunking away as you can okay okay um, any more questions or anything I can I can assist with I lost you guys for a short moment there, but hopefully Michael can fill me in. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, it's 100 people walked into my office, so I had to scarf her. Oh, right. <laughs> it got very noisy. We were we were talking about assessments, but um, and, and Michael can fill you in, but I was yep. just saying that as we work through the course, Rachel, there, um, there'll be chunks of the course that directly relate to your assessment. Yeah. So there'll be at times that I sort of say, right, you know, keep this bit stashed because this is part one of assessment one right yep cool and that's and that's definitely starting to happen next week when we look at our who are our learners um so you know it's not such a big tidal wave at the end of the course to deal with these assessments cool great so between now and next week what is there something we're working on um so between now and next week so you had let me just open up Moodle. Um, what have we got on Moodle? What's opening for uh, on Sunday is teaching in the 21st century. Uh, yep. So currently we are in week two and next week we'll be teaching the 21st century, which will be week three. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what I was going to say. The, um, the forums, what did, what's agreed as far as postings on that what what do we no need? one Kate well, I haven't had enough feedback. Oh, okay right right what what would you think would be oh. feasible because thinking the idea of a forum mm. is you know when you've got your class and you're face to face in front of your class and you've got this fantastic way of you know you've got this, this discussion personally I learn incredibly well by talking things through which drives my husband crazy but um you uh -huh. know if you that discussion is a is a great way of gaining you know a deeper understanding so when you're studying online and you're sitting in your study at home you know you're not getting that so the idea of a forum is to have that discussion type right. so what would what what would you think would be you know as a group not just you Michael what would you think as a group would be you know feasible um, amount of postings each week Two, three? Yeah, maybe two, two or three. Yeah. 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 Two, two sounded good. Two sounded good. <laughs> Rachel? Yep, no, that sounds fine. I'm yeah. I don't want to, I definitely don't want to overload you, but you also want to get the value of that conversation. Yeah. So somewhere between two and three. Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, and, you know, it, it's almost, it's kind of keeping that thread. So it can be instead of, setting up a new discussion each time it can be just to 
be replying to the person that started the discussion. Yep. Oh, yeah. So that can be an easy, easy way of sort of following through that whole thread. Okay. And it's quite, I always used to, when I was studying online, I used to get there and, and start the discussion first. Um, mm -hmm. Because then you kind of had, you know, got yeah. your got your ideas out and then other people had to respond and take it off in another direction. So that can be a, a cheat's way of starting. All right. Okay. Um, there was a, an email you sent through. I don't know when, two days ago maybe, and it had a, um, that the book that you'd suggested reading and there was a PDF um, oh, yes. version and that wasn't, a, when I clicked on that, there's nothing there. Oh, I ah. think um, Bronwyn sorted that out. Oh. Um, I'll forward you the email. Thank you. <laughs> this is the problem. I think I, I'm, I'm getting lost in the emails at the moment and then when I need to find something, I'm going, oh, where did I put that? Yeah, yeah. And, and that will, I would imagine that would settle down. Yep. Um, and the other hard thing as well is, you know, with the Moodle discussions, because, you know, you'd be mm. getting a ping every time somebody yep. puts a discussion on there. Yeah. Right. Um, a lot of pings. A lot of pings. A lot of pings. <laughs> there can be a way, and if you've got someone that's a Moodle guru up there, um, right. there can be a way that you can um, set it up so that you just, you know, say at five o'clock every afternoon, they all come through. Oh, yeah rather than actually 